when I was 13 years old, two things of significance happened in my life that still guide my life today. First, the quality of my <laughs> fashion choices took a pretty serious decline. I don't know why blood splatter was a good theme for a summer shirt. But anyway, second, more importantly, the reason we're here, the Commodore 64 came out. Now, I was a computer nerd back then. I know that's hard to believe. But <laughs> and in the nerd communities that I was involved in, one of them was the what we'd call the wares community. That, that was um they were mostly like teenage hackers like me. We'd get a piece of software like a hot new game and we'd try to figure out how to uncover its hidden codes and easter eggs by stepping through its encrypted code in reverse. And so this this kind of reverse engineering, this deconstructing of software was a pretty fun challenge for us. And that's a skill that I'd always kind of kept in the back of my head. Years later, as I went into digital marketing, it proved to be really, really helpful. So when viral marketing campaigns started getting the world's attention, I decided that I would put some of those nerd skills to the test. Last summer, I started systematically reverse engineering 50 of the world's most successful viral campaigns. Some of them are corporate marketing campaigns, some of them are total flukes, uh, as you'll see here on this list. And by deconstructing them, by reverse engineering how they worked from the inside and what was common to them, I discovered that nearly all of these successful viral marketing campaigns share six common characteristics. And I believe once you know those six common characteristics, I call them markers, like genetic markers, that when you apply them as a formula to your marketing campaign, your campaign, the chance of it going viral has just skyrocketed. You might just strike lightning. And don't discount things like lightning. You know, a lot of people think lightning is just random, and lightning is not as random as you might think. Take, for instance, Roy Sullivan. Over his 35-year career as a park ranger in Virginia, Roy was hit by lightning not once, not twice, but seven times more than any other person that the Guinness Book of World Records knows about. So what made him so unlucky? Just circumstance. He worked in Virginia, which is a small number of states in a corridor that has some thunderstorms. He works all of his work hours outside, in most cases in big, wide open areas. It's not, it's not random at all, right? Factors that made it more likely for him to be hit were aligned. It's as simple as that. These days, of course... There's a nap for that. Key factor number one is what I call ACC matching. ACC stands for Audience, Content, and Call to Action. This is a really critical piece of the puzzle. And what this means in essence is you have to make sure that the content of your campaign targets the right audience. And not only is it an audience you want to gain, but also one that's likely to share that campaign. For instance, this is a um, uh, an example of really good audience content matching. This guy, the, uh, some big uh, soccer star, hits the crossbar four times in a row. That was number one. And never actually touches the ball with his hands or stops to line up the shot. It's pretty amazing. It's also, as it turns out, the product of computer-generated animation. But whatever, it's a great video. And at the start of this video, someone brings him these gold Nike shoes and he puts them on delicately and then does this. The implication, of course, is if you buy our shoes, you can do this too. This is an example of good audience content matching. I'm going to break that down for you in just a moment. But first, here's an example of bad audience content matching. Hey, bees, bees, bees! Yo, I found some nectar. DJ Honey, drop it! Yo, already you could, t you could tell this is going to suck. When I do this in front of audiences at conferences, I actually walk around with $50 in cash and ask people, I, I, I say, I'll give you this $50 bill if you can tell me what the product or brand this is. I guess I'm gonna stop doing this now that people have seen this video and I'm about to tell you. But think about it, here, can you tell? What, what product is this ad campaign advertising? No, it's not honey. It's not beehives, no. Usually at this point, I'll double it to 50 bucks. I actually will bring $100 in cash with me to be able to double it. And I never actually have to hand, it, hand that money out yet. Anyway, it's haagen if you can believe that. haagen the ice cream company. It, this, to me, is a clear example of um, 
some slightly aging ad executive who has teenagers at home who comes into the creative meeting of their ad agency in the morning all charged up and he's going, wait, 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 I've got it, I've got it. The kids like rap, right? Let's just add rap music to it. Get where my bees at. Turns out this campaign was a fundraising campaign, essentially that Hagen Doss had created to help save the global planet of bees. Now, why? Because the worldwide honeybee population is already declining. No honeybees needs, means no pollination. No pollination means poor quality fruit. Poor quality fruit means poor quality fruit. Ice cream, anyway, you get the idea. Ergo, declining sales and ice cream, blah, blah, blah. And if you donated money, it went to two universities which were working in that space. But, all right. Now, let's deconstruct that ACC matching, and you'll begin to see how this falls apart. In my research, the way I reverse engineered for audience content was looking at three variables. First, the existing brand audience, or who currently buys what we sell. Second, the proposed target audiences of the campaign's creative, or who are we trying to reach by producing and seeding a viral campaign. And three, the campaign's call to action. Or who is most likely to do what we ask them to do? So first, the existing brand audience, well, haagen they're usually adults. They're not very price sensitive. They tend to like natural products. They don't like a lot of chemicals. They tend to be in sort of the middle class, upper class. You know, these, these are people that don't mind spending a little bit of extra money on premium ice cream. The proposed target audiences of the campaign's creative, on the other hand, are teenagers. They're young adults. They, they do have problems with money. You know, they, they don't care if it's natural or not, to be perfectly honest. In fact, these people eat pizza pops, you know? And finally, the CTA audience, the call to action audience, or who is most likely to do what we're asking them to do. Well, first of all, what are we asking them to do with the campaign? Give money. Who gives money to environmental campaigns? People who've done it before. People who are aware of global climate change issue. What I want you to do is take a look at that, those bottom three boxes and notice that none of these things match. When there's no match in the CTA between the creative, the target audiences, and the call to action, your chance of it going viral has gone down. Now, let's compare that to the Nike viral campaign. And all three key audiences match. Who's using us already? Who are we trying to reach? And who do we want to take action? In this case, the action, of course, is to buy shoes. When all three match, your chance of it going viral has increased. Put another way, when you successfully match the audience with the content, with the audience for the call to action, you get sharing. If, on the other hand, you're targeting people who don't currently buy what you sell, again, it doesn't have to be from you, remember. They're just not consumers of that product or service at all, or they're not likely to take the action you're asking them to. They probably won't share your content, and it will never go viral. The internet is littered with attempts at viral campaigns that never took off. There are thousands of them languishing in obscurity, partly because the audience, content, and call to action did not match. And when it comes to this, you will need to seed the audience with the creative. I'm sure if you want to, you can upload it to YouTube and email a couple of your friends and hope it'll take off. But there are specific things you can do to increase the odds. Facebook has got some pretty advanced targeting tools. Let's say you're a store in Vancouver that sells knitting stuff like yarn and needles and um, books about yarn and needles. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not a knitter. You can tell Facebook you want it to reach, in this case, only people within Canada and only people in BC. Who, or, and in fact, they have to be women between the ages of 23 and 35. This is placing ads on Facebook. You only pay if someone clicks on the ad. And here's why Facebook is dominating the online ad business. You can say only those people who are already interested in what I have to sell. You can get even more detailed, target people on their birthdays, maybe offer them a special coupon, what gender they lust after, what languages they speak, where do they work or where have they worked, and so on. And then you build the ad right there. Now, here's a quick example that I threw together. You get a headline, an image, a few lines of text. Don't be afraid to suggest that people share the video. Just because this is on Facebook doesn't mean the old rules of a strong call to action doesn't apply. 
I would use the phrase viral video. In our own work, I've discovered that if you use that phrase, it will get more clicks. People associate viral videos with something funny. Actually, if I were doing this for real, I'd put one of those play buttons in the center here to increase the clicks. The deer in the headlights uh, look of this guy doesn't hurt either. And then you click go and your ads start running right away. And don't just upload it to YouTube. If it's a video, use a seeding service like TubeMogul. You upload the video to TubeMogul once and it distributes it to a couple dozen of the internet's most highly visited video sites. Or a service like HeySpread, which basically does the same thing. So that's ACC matching. Match your audience with your content with the call to action. And don't be afraid to seed it to get started and you will have mastered the first of six keys to producing a killer viral marketing campaign. The second, a single simple concept. Successful viral campaigns are stripped down to their bare essentials. They revolve around a single concept. They don't use three act structures. They don't try to develop characters. They are just one single idea. Think back to the Nike soccer video. There's only one thing going on. The guy was kicking the ball. Double Rainbow Guy, if you don't know Double Rainbow, I'll show you an example of Double Rainbow in a moment, but Double Rainbow was one single simple...